You've got mail. Hey, Deadline here. We got a little bit of a mail call going on. We got sent a couple packages. I'm opening them. I already opened this one. So the shock and awe that was on my face when I saw this cannot be expressed. But I think it's funny because he wrote fragile on here. This is from Ron Wentz. Thanks, Ron. It turns out that somebody on the Commodore Farms needed some help with uh, figuring out a modern solution. And everybody was offering all kinds of crazy ideas. And I was like, uh-uh. You just need to do this one thing. And I'm telling him about this little uh, adapter that you put on the back. You needed an S video connection, right? So you know, all, you all know what I'm talking about. The little box that goes on to the monitor port provides an S video out. Yeah. So he was pretty appreciative of that. And uh, I posted on my personal timeline on Facebook that I wanted some of these. And he saw that. He sent me one of these. After he saw my post, he says, I'm gonna send you one of these. What's your address? Gave it to him, boom, here it is. And this is one of those old Archer ones, right? Ancient technology. And uh, we're gonna be using this on our set coming up. We're building the sci-fi set. I don't know if I've uh, expressed that at all, but that's what's happening. He also sent this, which is, uh, Looks like a 300 ohm to 75 ohm adapter. A lot of folks won't know what that is. If you're looking at it and you're under, let's say 30 years old, you might not know. But we used to use those sort of things to connect the retro computers to CRT televisions. Now, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be part of another video because what we have here is a package from Retro Game Boys and he makes these awesome controllers and I'm going to show you one here in a minute. I put a picture right up there because we got one a while back for when uh, Pac, Dilly, Pac Billy did a Dig Dug challenge and we failed miserably because we had a bad joystick. I had failed to maintain my joysticks. Problem. Makes more sense now, you monster! So anyway, we got a solution from him, and it's one of the uh, Atari, or no, it's actually one of the NES style controllers. Looks kind of like this one right there. I'll show you a picture of it right here. But it's one of the best controllers I've ever had for any retro computer. And uh, he sent us some business cards and some brochures because we're going to be taking that to Vintage Computer Festival Midwest along with the other things that were in the package and that is the Wackadoodle controllers. Just look at how beautiful these are. And we're going to be, I'm going to be doing a little test in a few minutes on the actual Commodore. And oh man, these feel awesome. Okay, that's gonna be epic to share that. And he sent us two of them. I think one is the prototype and the other is the production model that he that he created from the prototype. Yeah, amazing job. We're gonna try these out and see how they work. So thanks so much, Mike from Retro Game Boys. And if you don't own a Retro Game Boys controller, you should go there right now and get yourself one because they are awesome and not only that but if you got like a game design or something that you're thinking of and you want to make a special controller custom controller right look at that he can do anything we even gave him the print to put on the front and he did it so it's just amazing you've got mail oh did you hear that that's the bell, and that means it's time for everyone's favorite segment, reading viewer emails. Kevin K. writes, Hey guys, I recently discovered and subscribed to your YouTube channel, and I've been binge-watching a lot of your videos, especially the ones focusing on Commodore 64, my first computer. 
I really like your channel's mascot, Clicky, and the interactions between him and others. I was curious to see what makes him tick, so I downloaded the code from your GitHub page. Thanks very much for posting this. It really helps me to learn and fill in gaps in my admittedly modest experience with 65XX assembly. I used to work in software QA for a few years, which I think has given me OCD, so I hope you will forgive me if I bring up something I noticed in the demo. Why, I never! Pressing F2 toggles crying mode, but if I press F4 to toggle power pack mode and switch back, pressing F2 no longer toggles crying mode. I opened the monitor in Vice and I noticed the sprite pointers changed before and after toggling F4. I noticed that if I change uh, $7FA and $7FB back to 99, I can then see the tier sprites. Anyway, just a very tiny nitpick in an otherwise awesome demo that I thought might be an easy fix on your end. Keep up the great content, please. Best regards, Kevin. So, we investigated the issue with the code and we found a problem with our draw pet mint screen and it is a bug that overwrites the sprite corners so thanks for pointing this out and let me just show you real quick what i'm talking about so in the clicky program that's what this is uh it has import from the commodore 64 programming include Draw pet mate screen .asm. and if we look at this, this is the file. It's a macro that draws pet mate screen, right? And what was happening was I was just doing, I was doing it lazily, and I put four blocks of 256. And if and if anyone knows anything about the screen memory and what comes right after it, uh, it's this, it's the sprite pointers. So I had to adjust it at the end to only draw the up to and include the last character of the actual screen memory. And so that is fixed. Thank you, Kevin. And so, once again with the Kevin K emails. I bought my first bread bin Commodore 64 in 1985 while stationed in West Germany. I the following year, I sold it and bought the 128 in 1571 that is shown in the attack screenshot. That's very cool. I ended up buying an XT compatible in 1989 and that's pretty much when I stopped using my 128. Then upgraded to various PCs from there, it's similar to your story. I went through a period in 2007 through 2008 whereby I was buying lots of Commodore machines that I never owned in the past. Plus 4, 64C, A500, A1200. The Amiga 1200 was fun because I replaced the spinning hard drive with a compact flash drive which made it really fly. Yesterday, I followed step 6 of your Commodore programming tutorial with Petmate. Thanks for that. I wanted to see if I could use a function I wrote last year to compress and decompress it using basic RLE compression and I'm surprised that the four screens and color data was able to fit into a 5k program file. I've attached the files here for your reference. I'm not very good with making videos myself, but I think a video on incorporating RLE compression might be a good addition to your programming for the C64 series. Meanwhile, I will definitely be looking forward to your upcoming Executive AI video. Once again, thanks Kevin, and we are actually spooling up your RLE compression video, and I just wanted to show you in our spool over here, we have a working folder, which is not included in the GitHub, but we've got our part 14 RLE compression, right, and it's got your code in there. I am going to go through and convert this to kick assembler and to be able to work with our Commodore 64 include library so that's really awesome and uh, we've also got um, some other stuff coming up strobe light um, doing a keeping score video it's been done before but we're just gonna do it our way and then a RAM expansion unit read and write and then some more other videos that we got spooled up. I don't know 
these order the order of these might change but that's what we got going right now so thanks again Kevin you're awesome and one more thing I just want to mention about Kevin he has a web page called Kevin's Retro Page. It's on NeoCities. It's kcrossnick.neocities.org. And if you go there, he's got some things on here. What I find it really cool is the 6502 opcodes page. He's got a converter, hex, decimal, binary. And then if you want to know anything about any of the opcodes, you can click on it and it'll go and tell you about them. So it's a very helpful resource if you're doing uh, 6502 assembly code programming. So go there and check it out. If you'd like to have your email read in a future mailbag video, send us an email to mailbag at citizen.net. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on City's End. Play for my City's End for a different